guys. We're putting up the resetting the pig brig in a different location today. We wanted to go through with you um, kind of a step by step of us installing it. Um, you'll notice that we have the feeder here that we've been uh, conditioning at this location for a couple, uh, about a week, maybe two weeks. Um, we do have uh, some pigs coming in. I don't know if you want to zoom in, but we have the beat down path here. No corn under the feeder. All, all good signs. There's actually a trail going off through there where they're coming in and out. So we all we have the signs, and we also have set up our <clears throat> our cell trap camera over that way, and actually have witnessed the footage of them being being here pretty much every night around 9 p.m. Um, we have one coming one coming in for sure. So we're gonna go ahead and set this up and try to get a hold of that one pig. But uh, we have the feeder here, so we're gonna use that as our center point for the trap. And step one of the of the process is to figure out the center point and then you take one of your ground stakes here uh, and identify that and you take your measuring strap here and put put this ring through and then you take your ground stake and drive it in the ground so that you can measure out an equal distance away from it whenever you're setting your t-post step two so we figured out kind of the general idea of the layout of the trap we're going to load pigs out coming from this direction here so we're going to set our first post kind of in line with where we're going to put the back the trailer in to load the pigs out when we take our measuring strap which is marked in the center of the trap there come down and the point where that ring is is where your t-post is going to go So you set that mark and then get it. We're gonna drive this. We've already pre-marked these from whenever we've installed the post before. If you look right there, there's a little mark there that marks. When we drive down to that mark, that'll leave five foot of this T-post exposed up out of the ground. So we're gonna drive this T-post down until we hit that mark, maybe, if I don't die first. Step three, moving on to the next T-post. This measuring strap, if you deploy it correctly, will give you the T-post an equal distance from the center point. So you take the hook end of your orange strap, Put it at the bottom of the post and extend the strap out tight this way and this way. And that's where your next T-post goes, right? Where the weeds are. And then we're gonna drive a T-post right there. So something we found out today that's very hard for somebody who's five foot tall to drive a seven foot tall T-post <laughs> with a post driver. Step four we're gonna go with 
We're gonna come around and put one of these T-post mounts on the top of every T-post. And then we're gonna hook a cam strap to those to each one of the mounts. So we'll go around and do that now. So it's important to hook from the bottom up. You come around like that. It goes below the first knuckle on the T-post. And you just tighten it down. You want to put that strap in to where the cam releases up, and that way, whenever you pull down on the strap, it's going to tighten it. So you want to pull down and not up. So make sure that that's the correct direction. So we're going to go do that nine more times. Next step is to put the net up. And so we got it bundled up here from the last deployment and we'll take everything loose the way we got it tied up. Roll it out, we'll get it around the inside of the trap there and get it get it all set up. And there have to be people who uh, stand outside the game and do not identify themselves with a class with a name, with an ego, with a persona, with a role. But then I get a little sugar in me and I start to go cuckoo. So part of this step, we've got the net strung out kind of halfway in a little bit of a circle. And we'll play it out as we hook it up to the top of the T-posts here. But if you'll come in here close, I'll show you what we're looking at. So everywhere that there's a hog ring snapped in on this net, this top rail of this net is what's going to hook to the T-post, okay? And so you need to make sure that if you already have these straps in place that they face the back. And you also need to make sure that your bore shield is facing the inside before you start doing this. We're gonna take that hog ring, just like that, and we're gonna fold it up underneath the hook and tuck it in there nice and tight. And then we're gonna go do that each and every one of the two. You know what I'm saying? So we've gotten them all done all the way around at the two ends where they come together if you uh, if it's if you you know if you roll it up <clears throat> and it's got a you roll it up and the seams not connected which is what we did this last time it has two hog rings on the end there where it'll show you where both of the sides of the seam are supposed to hook in at the t-post mount so we've done that we've got everything connected to the other nine t-posts we're going to move on to the next step well, next up on the agenda is to put the trap cap on. Um, we we don't have one of the commercially produced ones yet. Um, we're supposed to be getting one. But in the meantime, we've kind of built our own. So you can take this next step with a grain of salt. If you don't have one, just move on to the next step. If you do have a trap cap, follow the instructions in the instruction manual because we don't have the one that they produced yet. We've just built our own. But in the meantime, just take a look at what we built. Check it out.
Next up, we're going to set these ground anchors here. These are meant to drive in the ground. Put this tool right here. Put the ground anchor in like that. You put it in the ground at an angle away from the trap, about four feet, and drive it down into the ground. And you measure that by hooking this strap onto the base of the T-post and going back to that black mark right there and that'll give you your distance away from the T-post you need to be. So we're gonna go drive some ground anchors. All right, so pro tip we learned from the co-founders of the pig brick company is that sometimes when the pigs are hitting the the trap, this is going to be under tension and they hit this and it flexes the strap and then if you have this hooked into the ground anchor like this, it could relax the strap enough to let that hook come out and then be loose. And if they do that on enough of those, then they'll be able to get out. So one of the things we learned is they'll come up through the eye of that hook and then hook it around. It creates a even if they even if they get slack it's not coming off of that hook and when it tightens down it'll look just like that so the next step is we're going to set our ground stakes here in the ground and they coincide with everywhere there's a quick link attached right here but the first thing you have to do in the step is put your measuring strap back in center hole so you know where center is and you can measure away from it. And you'll take this measuring strap and come out away from the center stake and you'll take this ground stake and go in at an angle towards the center of the trap. you will drive that in to about six to eight inches off the ground. Gotten our trap cap secured again. That's something that we, we have our own custom one for right now, so it's not really something that I mean, if you want to build one, if you guys like it and you want to see how we did it or whatever, just drop something in the comments and or uh, whatever. Get, get a hold of us, we'll, we'll kind of show you what we did. But um, otherwise, we've got our trap cap secured the way it's supposed to be, and uh, so now we're gonna uh, now we're gonna weave the seam together. And basically the way that works is it's just like sewing. So you're gonna take the two ends like this, and you're basically gonna go in one hole, skip a hole, and then come out. And then skip a hole, and then go in, and then come out every other one all the way down. And it creates enough binding tension that there's no reason to secure it at the bottom. So when we get ready to load pigs out, if we decide that's what we're going to do, um, then all we have to do is unclip the carabiner at the top and pull it out. We'll do the same thing. We'll do it for that outer perimeter net, and then we'll come back with the second cable and do the bore shield uh, on its own uh, so that whenever we load out, we'll come to here, and then we'll be able to release this seam to open up a gap for our loadout chute when the time comes to be able to do that. So, on to sewing. All right, so we got the uh, the seam woven together here. We've done it both with the bore shield and with the outer uh, perimeter net, and they're ready to go. So we're gonna move on to uh, setting the trap, or not setting it, but we're gonna put our trap in condition phase so that we can get the uh, hogs used to it being here because it's going to be new for them and um, we do it a little bit differently in the fact that we want to create 360 degree access with the net down far enough to brush their backs um, which is a little bit different than the way they recommend it um, from from the manufacturer um, I feel like both both ways um, work 
but this is just the way we decide to do it for our operation out here in Texas. So basically what we'll do is we'll take each cam strap here and we will go up and over the top to a quick link. Or it's every other one. We'll go up and over the top to a quick link and we'll hook that cam strap into the quick link and then we'll tighten that cam strap down to create a sag in the net 360 degrees around. And that'll be how we'll put it into condition mode.